Hello everyone, Richie Melby, MontanaSports.com. Welcome back to the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show, another edition. We are now three weeks into your league schedule. Some of these teams, of course, have an extra overall game, but the standings beginning to separate themselves between some of these programs now. In fact, only two teams remain unbeaten right now in the Frontier Conference play. Montana Tech, Southern Oregon, each 3-0, and and there's only one seeking its first league win. MSU Northern now 0-3 after falling to Carroll College at Nelson Stadium in Helena over the weekend. Rocky Mountain College proving it belongs in the conversation, not only for top 25 teams in the country, but also for your Frontier Conference championship by season's end. Battle and Bears playing Montana Tech at home this past weekend. Did everything right except get this win on the football scoreboard as Montana Tech went with five. Quinn McQuarrie touchdowns. Deion Williams, Chris Kelly totaling nearly 250 yards receiving. They had a couple of scores as well as Chuck Morrell and the Ore Diggers. Stay perfect. 3-0, and oh, the head coach of the Ore Diggers talking about that undefeated season so far. I think it went on the road in this league's tough and and uh, you know obviously we're up a uh, 34 to 7 to start the fourth quarter. We need to do a better job of closing out the game. I mean it's just right there. Um, they had to do a lot of things right and we had to do a lot of things wrong and I'll, you know certainly give them credit for uh, stepping up and making some plays, but we got to close the deal. I mean we're 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 about a play away there from running away with the game and you know good learning lesson for our guys. I mean everybody in the Frontier Conference is, is are is, good quality teams that are competitive and everybody's going to fight to the very end. You mentioned the good learning lesson. How does that benefit the team? Now they've seen it. Now they know we have to close things out. Right. Yeah. I mean, you just got to know that that people aren't going to go away in this league. And I think, you know, again, with the, the number of young guys that are on the field for us right now is a little bit of a wake up call. And and, um, you know, a lesson to us in playing good team football all the time. I thought our special teams were not on point there. You know, and certainly we gave them some opportunities via special teams, um, you know, late in the game. And, and they recovered an onside kick that we were ready for and made some plays. And, and all of a sudden the, the momentum of the game swung. But at the same time, you know, some veteran guys stepped up and closed out the game. It was good to see us take five minutes off the clock in the fourth quarter and finish the deal. Let's go offense first, just the consistency that continues to be there. Quinn's top five in total yards per game. Jed, I think, is number two in rushing right now, and your offensive line orchestrates the entire thing. How pleased are you with that side of the football? Well, very pleased with them. I, I mean, I, in fact, but you know, the one thing I'll say about them is, is they're doing some tremendous things, and they're certainly a handful, but I'm gonna, I expect even more out of them. You know, I look at, uh, you know, some, some times where we're so explosive, you know, very first play of the game, 75-yard touchdown, uh, but then we come out the next series, and and we kind of mess around. We drop some balls, and, and we just got to make sure our offensive focus is there, is all, is there all the time. I mean, we're going to hold our offensive guys to a super high standard because of how talented they are, um, and they're very well coached. And just looking for them to be more consistent, just like we are with any any other uh, position on our football team right now. Deion Williams is a guy that we've right. grown accustomed to, obviously, and he had another big football game. What's something fans don't know about him? Something fun about Deion? I've had a chance to chat with him a couple of times, and uh, just a fun kid. Yeah, no, Dion's great. You know, obviously, uh, uh, came in here redshirted, uh, came out of California. He's been here since his fourth year in our program. Um, and just his growth and development has been incredible. I think, you know, very talented guy coming out of high school, uh, but probably didn't have some of the, the things in place that he needed to do to be successful. And I've just seen him grow so much and work and work and work. And, and, and now he's become super dynamic. Um, he's a really durable young man. I mean, he goes out there and competes all the time. You know, I look back a year ago, we had him playing a lot of special teams. He's going out there and competing like crazy. He loves to compete. And, um, you know, he's a fun loving guy. He's always got the goofy socks on. Um, he's always having a good time out there. And, and uh, I'm just really proud of his, his maturity process that's taken place with him. All I know is that uh, when we want a big play, uh, we know we can put the ball up and he can go get it. And, you know, that's a pretty common thing in college football these days where you see guys, that wide receivers on the outside that are really explosive and, and they're hard to defend. And he just happens to be one of those guys. How does a California guy adjust to Butte, Montana, especially <laughs> now that the temps are dropping, you got yeah. the long sleeves. Well, I was giving him a hard time the other day. I mean, it's been, you know, 85, 90 degrees out. Also, the temperature drops last week. He's the first one. He's got a hoodie on and the whole other deal. You know, he's he's definitely a veteran of the, the weather changes. And, you know, I, I, one thing I'm really proud of guys like that is they've embraced the culture here and and have, have done a tremendous job of coming in and being a part of our community. But the community has also embraced them as well and made them feel at home. And, and those guys love it here. And if he's got two, three guys on him, Kelly, LaChance. I mean, that entire receiving group does not drop passes and come up with big first Yeah, Sean Sullivan. I mean, Sean another Sullivan. one, uh, Will Hunthausen. I mean, you could go down the list here a ways. Uh, 
uh, Alex Steele. I mean, we just got other guys that can step up and make plays. And, you know, I think in, in when you're trying to defensive game plan, you try to eliminate one or two guys, but you can't eliminate four or five guys. And, and you know, I just like the versatility. We're able to package the receivers in a number of different ways. We're able to feature different guys with different sets. And, and that's what's made us really explosive here early in the season. Eastern Oregon coming off a loss that they would have loved to have had to avoid yeah. there against College of Idaho. They slide down the standings, but also the Frontier Conference standings, more importantly, rather than the yeah. polls. Uh, what do you expect out of those guys coming in, needing a big win to bounce? Well, I, it's all out onslaught. First of all, you know, Coach Camp does a tremendous job at Eastern Oregon. Um, obviously, they made a heck of a run last year. I think it's one of our most challenging games. Every time we play them, they come to town here, they get ready to go. Um, I know Coach Camp loves playing in Butte. And, you know, you look at their season right now, this is this is certainly a big, big game for them because um, it's hard to stay in the standings with three losses. And, and they're a quality team. They're a young team. In a lot of ways, they're very similar to us. I mean, lost some guys from a year ago, but they come in here, they can put points on the board in a hurry. Um, and then they're very different defensively. So we'll have our hands full on Saturday. How much of a chess match is it for you and the coaching staff going against somebody like Coach Camp, who has all the right yeah. plays? Yeah, I mean, it's always a challenge. I, we've played them so often. Yeah, I always joke, this is the first time we have not gone to La Grande. I should have bought a house in La Grande because I've been to La Grande, Oregon so many times. You know, we've played them over and over and over here, and the staffs have stayed the same and intact, so there's really not any surprises. So, you know, the little adjustments that happen in the game, it's, it's always interesting to see, and I think you know, Coach Camp and his crew do as good a job as anybody at that. And then finally, we're kind of starting to see separation, not only in your league, but across the country at those other leagues. Do you look at what's happening out there? I mean, not really pay attention, but playoff scenarios start to take place pretty early on. I mean, if you guys can take care of business, this could be who we'd see in a first round. Right, yeah, it's it's a little far away for that yet. I mean, I'm definitely in tune. I have a lot of friends that coach throughout the entire country, so I'm, we're in tune with what's going on out there. Uh, but I also know that, you know, in our league here, man, we just can't pull our focus off of anything besides what's right in front of us because, you know, I don't care. I, I think one and one and two later in the season, you play a one and five or a two and five team that is just as dangerous as the top team in the league. And that, the difference between, you know, the top of the standings in the Frontier Conference and the bottom is so small. I don't think people probably understand that or realize how, how, how small that difference is. So we don't pull our focus off of what's right in front of us. The Ore Diggers will host Eastern Oregon this Saturday, 1 p.m. Of course, the Mountaineers drop in a contest of the College of Idaho 28-20 on Saturday, seeing with it their top 25 ranking fall as well. We'll talk more about Carroll College coach Mike Van Dees getting the first win of the season with the Fighting Saints, that win over MSU Northern. But we, of course, want to remind you the MontanaSports.com website has your updated standings, the schedules, and all the video highlights from around the league, as well as features your stories throughout the week. Find them right there, montanasports.com. Head over to the website, hover over that Frontier Conference tab, and look for your favorite team. Welcome back, everyone, to the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show. Joining us right now, Carroll College head coach Mike Van Dees, coming off the first win of the season, 34-3 at home on Saturday against the MSU Northern Lights. Before we break things down individually, your thoughts on that win Saturday afternoon. Well, I think going into the game, you know, going into the game, the game plan on both sides of football, certainly with the offenses to run the football better and more efficiently than we had the first two games. We thought we did it well against Tech the first half, but uh, since then, the last six quarters were pretty, pretty much a struggle for us. And defensively, we just, uh, we couldn't, get, you know, we couldn't stop the big plays and get off the field on third down, which has been kind of our nemesis. And uh, when you look at the film, you look at what took place on Saturday, those were top, probably the top two um, Things that we accomplished that we thought, hey, hey, we have to do in order to win. When we think Carroll College football, we love talking about the running game and what Nick gets dialed up. Coach Hogan with the offensive line. Major Ali, let's talk about this young man, a guy that burst onto the scene last year, and we expected some big things, and we've seen it at times, and this was another great game for him, over 160 yards rushing, found the end zone as well. Well, unfortunately, you know, at Rocky, we fell behind, and we had to play catch up, and uh, the inside game wasn't there, and that's kind of his forte, you know, running in between the tackles, and... Um, he, you know, what was so impressive about him, he had the amount of carries, 24 carries, but it was drive after drive. There was a couple of drives that it just seemed like it was a major all league show and the offensive line did a great job. But, you know, the yards after contact that he, that he established was impressive. And being able to get in the end zone and, and have that, uh, you know, kind of cap off his day was impressive. But boy, what a great day he had running the football. When you look back through the history of Carroll football, Yards after contact, the, the Caminos, Johnny Caminos back in the day, the Chance Demery's a Montana guy. Who does 
he remind you of Major Ali from some of those guys, maybe even going farther back, that plays that gritty style of football? Well, he's a lot like Dustin Rinker in some respect, you know, same stature, uh, run between the tackles. Dustin, we probably put on the perimeter a little bit more. But I think Major is one of those guys that keeps his legs churning because of his height. You know, you better, you better go low on him because you're not going to be able to tackle him at the shoulder pass. He's got great uh, balance. Uh, he's got great determination. And you can just see, I think, as great running backs, whether it's Gross Locke, Camino, Jet Thomas, Chance Demery, guys that you mentioned, uh, those guys got better as the game went on, and you just can kind of see how that momentum just keeps building. You're with Major all the time, and I know you're on defense, but uh, when you're out there on the field, what, what does this kid have for a personality? He seems to be having fun anytime we bring a camera around for an interview. Well, he is a great young man. He's a, he's a great person off the field. He's a great leader in the classroom, in the weight room, whatever it is. He's always upbeat, as you said. He's always positive. He's got a smile. He's the type of guy that no matter what the scoreboard or no matter what the, the, the record, he's going to come to practice every day and work hard. And that's what I appreciate about him. And I think his teammates appreciate that, and it rubs off on them. Offensive line, we mentioned the running game right there. What improvements did you see from those guys up front? They kept their feet moving. They kept the drives going. I thought they did a great job picking up some of the blitzes. And, you know, the receivers coming in. Paul Hart came in and did a good job sealing off a defensive end. Uh, you look at Eric Dawson on the perimeter and Connor McGree, they did a great job. So great team effort. And, you know, I know Nick about in the middle of the fourth quarter came up to me and said, uh, you know, Woody Hayes and Bo Schembeck would be <laughs> proud of us today because that's kind of what the, the style of the game that took place on Saturday. Yeah, and that was on the offensive side. Let's switch it back over to defense. You wanted to see some, some of these guys step up. Reese Crady was on you mentioned. He had a good game. Uh, but the guy that drew our attention looking at the stat line is Drew Melton, an interception and then five pass breakups. I mean, they were trying to pick on him, and he wasn't having any of it. Well, he got a pick, he got a pick on that first drive. And that kind of set the tone, you know. They uh, they were number nine in the nation, their quarterback, in terms of total offense coming in. They were ranked pretty high in terms of the, the number of yards they put up. And they had a great game against Rocky. They did some things against Tech, even though it was kind of in a late mop-up game. But uh, Wilson's a great uh, quarterback throwing the football. He, uh, 83 and 19 were outstanding receivers. And they tested Drew. You know, Drew uh, had some good plays against Rocky, had some good plays against Tech, but he gave up a couple plays, too. And, I think that just set the tone for our defense. And uh, when you, you get a turnover early in the game, and especially in the first half, uh, it just fires everybody up and it says, hey, guys, we can do this. Let's stick with the plan. Now teams are maybe not going to go after him as much, or if they do, they're going to have to try and find different ways. And we know guys like Isaiah King, and we already talked about the Tucker Johnsons and the McBride Galtz in your defensive secondary as well. How nice was it? How fun is it, I guess, uh, to see something like that from one of those guys? Well, that's what you expect out of your corners. You know, we, we, uh, we don't give our corners much help. Those poor guys are out there on the island a lot of times. It, it looks like a zone coverage, but for the corners, if those guys come out in that area outside the hash mark, it usually turns into man-to-man -man coverage. Um, pass rush-wise, we hadn't been great. We had one sack on Saturday, but we had a lot of pressures, a lot of hurries, and I think that helped the corners a little bit. Uh, you saw McBride with an interception late in the fourth quarter. It was kind of a gift. It kind of just floated in his hands. The receiver didn't get to quite where it was supposed to be. But the pressure has a lot to do with that. And, you know, we're going to get tested this week. SOU, uh, they're going to throw 15, 16 fade routes. So our guys better be in shape and tape their ankles. Yeah, protect home field. That's the goal at Nelson Stadium. Not the case this coming Saturday now. You mentioned Southern Oregon, one of the top 25 teams in the country, coming off another big win, them getting past Montana Western. You talked about the fade routes. We know the quarterback. What do you see from a defensive coach looking at their offense? Well, even though... You know, the change of coaches in the situation uh, that took place this spring and when they haven't changed much. Coach Hall is, is a disciple of Southern Oregon. He was, a, he was an assistant there. I believe he played there. Uh, they're going to still throw the football downfield. They want to test your corners, and I think their philosophy is if we throw 10 fade routes and complete three, maybe only 30%, but you might get one or two touchdowns out of it. And they're going to put the pressure on your corners because they're going to tire them out. They can run four and five receivers at you. It's hard to be four and five deep at the corner spot, although I think we have three, maybe four pretty good ones that we'll be able to you know, interchange at, at different times. But uh, you still have to stop the running game. They still keep you honest. Their offensive line, I think, does a great job over the last couple of years. Um, the thing that's so impressed with them, they get the ball off on time. Even if it's a deep route, even if it's a, a 90s game on the perimeter, uh, you're not going to get sacks against them very often. And that's what uh, I think they, they really hang their hat on that. And then finally, sweater weather. Does it feel like football season now that uh, that weather kind of cooled down a bit? You're seeing it in practice, and uh, it's nothing you're not used to playing in Montana, coaching in Montana. Well, it, it has helps your attitude, you know. It gets lethargic after a while when you're out there for 30 days in the smoke and the heat. Uh, it, it was a godsend to have the snow and the, and, the, and, the, and the wind come in and blow the smoke out. 
Uh, but it'll be a little bit warmer in Southern Oregon. They've had some issues with the smoke and, and fires down there. And it'll be a little bit warmer than it has been here, but this will be a good week of practice with the weather. And um, we'll see if we can improve and, and watch a lot of film and see the things that we need to make adjustments on. Perfect. Carroll College Head Coach Mike Van Deese, thanks as always for joining us, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Coming up next in the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show, we go to the other side of this Saturday's battle, Southern Oregon, Montana Western. We break down that win over the Bulldogs. Eight months have passed since Southern Oregon head football coach Craig Howard passed away unexpectedly in his home. That, of course, back in January. Support pouring in from every corner of the entire country and not just at the NAIA level. Now, when the Raiders entered the fall season here, still with heavy hearts, who'd have thought that coach Charlie Hall could have them at 3-0 right at the top of the standings, sitting right there with Montana Tech. It's no surprise SOU is finding success behind QB Tanner Trosen. The Raiders boast the number two scoring offense in the entire league. That's at 41.3 points per game. They also have the number two total offense, nearly 500 yards a contest. Trosen, meanwhile, third in the country in total offense per game. He's just shy of 400 yards. 360 of those come through the air. That's third best passing in the entire nation. But it's the defense that deserves the credit. SOU has the top D in the Frontier Conference, giving up only 333 yards per game and less than 25 points scored against. But it's the rush defense. Less than 115 yards allowed. That will be on display against Carroll College on Saturday as the Fighting Saints try to keep their ground game established. Meanwhile, Trey Holmes, Armando Gauger lead the league in sacks. So expect the Raiders to dial up the pressure against Carroll College in their home opener on Saturday afternoon. Southern Oregon Carroll College going 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon out there in Ashland. And don't forget to download your MontanaSports.com app for the latest news right on your smartphone. The highlights, recaps, feature stories, even this Frontier Conference Coaches Show delivered straight to your phone. Just search Montana Sports. That's one word in the App Store or in Google Play. Meanwhile, we take a look at the latest Frontier Conference football standings. We told you earlier in the show, Montana Tech, Southern Oregon, your only unbeatens in league play. Each of them now 3-0. Rocky Mountain College dropping that close one against Montana Tech at home, 2-1. They're back at home this weekend for homecoming. And then there's Carroll College, Eastern Oregon, and College of Idaho all at 1-2. Montana Western, the Bulldogs in there as well. They've dropped three consecutive games. Games, and MSU Northern still seeking its first win there at home this week. As we take a look at the scoreboard for what's happening this weekend, Saturday afternoon games across the board, Montana Tech, Eastern Oregon. It's a battle of top 25s in Butte. Will the ore diggers light the V one more time? Or can the Mounties get back on the winning track? College of Idaho Rockies, another one to keep an eye on. As mentioned, homecoming for the Battle and Bears. And then Carroll College taking off Thursday morning for that trip out to Ashland, Oregon, trying to take down a top 25 team in SOU and Western Northern. Rounding out the schedule. Again, you can find every single one of those games right there at MontanaSports.com on the Frontier Conference tab. Wrapping up another episode of your MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show, Richie Melby. We'll see you on Saturday.